because even after all those four years and 16 hour days, I am still learning. And there is no way that I am gonna get near close to all the information that there is in 30 minutes. <laughs> so bear with me. I will have a 15 minute area where you are more than welcome to ask any questions and I will do my best to answer those. After the questions, we will have a 10 to 15 minute break and at that point you can use the bathrooms through this hall, through this door right to the right. Make a right and down the hall there's a women's bathroom and a men's bathroom. Grab some water and if you have instruments, warm them up. And then 11 sharp, we will start a free jam. Based off the song, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Except today, I wanted to try and use those chords and that structure and give a little hands-on music theory lesson to perform it in a new sound. Like John Coltrane, my favorite saxophonist, was really good at that. And I wanted to, I wrote down a quote. Our 42nd president, Bill Clinton, said this. John Coltrane can take a jazz standard and play it in a way that made you think you were hearing it for the first time. That's what we're going to do with it. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. Lastly, we will collectively sight read My Funny Valentine. Good luck. I'm kidding. Sight reading is always a hit or miss, but we were, we're going to try and that's all that matters. Something beautiful that John Coltrane said himself, actually. I think the main thing a musician would like to do is give a picture of the listener, to the listener, of the many wonderful things he knows of and sense in the universe. That's what music is to me. It's just another way of saying this is a big, beautiful universe we live in that's been given to us. And here's an example of how magnificent and encompassing it is. That is my goal for today, to have fun and learn. I want you, I want all the bad notes, I want all the bad rhythms, I just want to have fun. And if you go into this thinking of that way, we warn you, have a seat anywhere. If you think of this in any way possible, uh, to just have fun, then we're going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> I do have a little bit of a disclaimer in jazz for all six of these workshops. I'm not going to go into gruesome detail on how rough the past has been. However, I will be touching on subjects like slavery, racism, oppression, drug use, and the devil. And I do apologize if that makes you uncomfortable, but there's your disclaimer. <laughs> Time to get started. So what is jazz? Jazz includes many different streams of music, some light and happy, some sad and slow, some agitated and full of surprises. Because when you think of jazz, I'm sure improvisation comes to mind. Improv making it up on the spot. Hearing live jazz is exciting, not only for the way it makes us feel, but also for the realization that we are following the musical thinking of that musician at that very moment while they're inventing the music. They are taking us along with them while they make up fresh sounds. This is the same situation to when painters are painting. You're not gonna sit there for 16 hours watching them live painting, but now we got YouTube and TikTok to speed that up. So it's the same feeling. You're watching the process, you're trusting the process, and that's how it is when you listen to jazz. You have to trust the process. Um, I am gonna teach you a little bit on how to listen to jazz, because I have seen in the past, uh, heard in the past from people, that jazz is a bit confusing, and I can see that with the improvisation that they do. Now, live jazz is real in the moment. Who wishes?
wishes they lived more in the moment. I know I do, yes. And with jazz, and the studying jazz helps the listener to know that they are living in the moment. There is a structure to it, and it's all music theory, so the musicians can start together and end together, but it is in the moment. I actually became a fan of, while I was in college, I chose to listen to indie music outside of my jazz studies because I needed a little escape from all that jazz that I was learning. A little breather, you know? It would, so I saw indie music as my escapism. Now, show of hands, does everybody know what escapism is? So, so, well, let's, let's, let me tell you. Escapism is the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant and engaging realities, especially by seeking entertainment in fantasy. Now, show of hands. How many think? How many of you did come into this workshop thinking jazz was confusing? Good. You came to the right place. <laughs> and I don't blame you for not being a fan of jazz to escape to. And because of the confusing styles. Jazz with the improv, it's a surprise. And a lot of times in our lives we need structure. We need to know where the beginning, middle, and end is. Sometimes, John Coltrane would solo for hours, he could even, if he had the chance. He wouldn't stop. Miles Davis even asked him, like, why don't you stop after your solos? And John's like, I just don't know where to stop. He loves playing that much. And Miles Davis was like, well, you could take it out of your mouth. <laughs> And I wanted to give you today, as long as having fun and learning a little jazz history, I wanted to inform you that there is a method to the madness. Now, understanding musical theory does help understanding the structure, but as long as you just appreciate the music, I'm sure this is going to go great. People have been actually loosely using the term jazz for all types of music that aren't jazz, with the improv, the swing beat. Um, we call those jazz-like. I do have um, an example for you today for a little participation. I'm, I'm going to play a jazz song and then a jazz light song. I'm gonna play them both, and then I want you to tell me which one was which afterwards. Oh, 
yes, yes. So the first one was jazz like. It's a band called Nunoosh. It's two saxophones and a drummer. A lot of people misunderstand that that is jazz because of it's a horn. It's um, instruments. It must be jazz. Well, those that that band is more I want to say electronic synth music. The second one, yes. Are you improvising? No, that is scripted. The second one is Gordon's Big Fat Band and um, Gordon Goodwin's Big Fat Band called Jazz Police. And that one is a big band jazz song. I know. That's what we're here today to learn the difference of.
presentation because the best way to learn jazz is to listen to jazz. It's just listening to every song and kind of picking it apart in your brain. Like, what instruments do you hear? What, do you, what is the vocalist saying? Um, I did also want to point out when you listen to these jazz songs that great improv, improv comes with the instruments. So when you see an instrument solo, uh, a musician soloing, they stand up and they play their instrument. But what happens when another musician starts playing? That one sits down, that one stands up. And a lot of times in this music you can hear that second musician taking bits and pieces from that first musician. They're taking the same rhythm, they're taking the same chords, and they hear it, and they say, I'm gonna respond to that. And it, it's like two people are talking. Has anybody ever listened to jazz in that sense before? I encourage you, when you do listen to jazz again, imagine it's just people talking to each other. And I think it will bring a lot more satisfaction to the to the music. In 1912, W.C. Handy became the father of blues, and this is because sheet music was being produced at that time. And when he wrote out Jelly Roll Blues. Sorry. <laughs> he wrote the Memphis Blues. I was getting ahead of schedule. <laughs> Told you there was a lot of information. This became the 12 bar blues you hear today. And he popularized this the same way Miles Davis popularized the, the birth of cool. I would I did want to try and experiment with you guys writing the blues. Um, however, we are a little behind schedule. But if you want to stay after the lecture, after the questions, and we, we are more than more than willing to just break out into some of our own blues if you if you'd like. But enough blues for the day. Let's move on to New Orleans jazz. And this was from 1890 to 1920. It's a style of jazz, almost, it's a style of jazz that almost, it's saying that all songs can be jazzed up with the New Orleans beat. New Orleans jazz has a swinging, stomping, syncopated beat. It's fun. This is what you would hear in the clubs back in the day with all the flapper dancers. I. I did put this floor in as a dance floor because dancing was a huge part of jazz, and it still is. I did want to explain the sound by instrument for New Orleans jazz, and that is with the trumpet, it carries the melody. And I point back here because I have this set up as a big band setup. The trumpets would be in the back, depending on the space, the trombones and the saxophones, and then your rhythm section. So the trumpet carries the melody, the clarinet or uh, the trombone punctuates the melody from below, here's the melody, and then the saxophone goes above the melody, so they harmonize. The rhythm section with the drums keeps a steady beat, the bass holds the sound together, and the guitar plays the chords, gives it structure. It's like building a house. And when you break down this music into those instruments, you can build a pretty great house, <laughs> a great song. Now, Ragtime did run parallel with New Orleans jazz and featured similar melodies and rhythms. This was done by an offbeat 
ragged syncopated rhythm. It was actually all performed by ear. Amazing to me, I think, because ear is probably the hardest thing to train in music. And they did it with practice sessions and memorization. They remembered what they played. They remembered how many measures they were playing, how many beats there was in the song. And they took that memory and they brought it to the streets. And this is what you know of as the New Orleans Bourbon Street Parades, where you have bands walking down the street just playing all this music. That's what they're doing. They spent time practicing, remembering, and they brought it to the streets and they're improv -ing. They're making it up as they go with that structure that they provided in the practice rooms. I think that's really cool. I do. Uh, it, it actually has been said, according to Jazz Music Archives, a simple way to look at rap time is to consider it as a form of composed jazz, or possibly America's first classical music. <laughs> In a hundred years, we might be studying Jelly Roll Morton, the jazz pioneer, like we studied Mozart in the past. I'm looking forward to that. Now, has anybody here ever heard of Storyville? Storyville was in New Orleans. It was located right behind the French Quarter. And it's actually what we know as the Red Light District. And basically, think of Bourbon Street today, and then times it by 110%, and that's what the Red Light District was. It was pretty racy. They actually had to close it down. But before they did, Storyville brought us Louis Armstrong. He was born and raised there. He got his first Cornet in, um, in a school for boys when he got into some trouble, and the cornet put him right back on track. And also, Jelly Roll Morton was known as the best pianist in Storyville. It was in 1915 that he popularized publishing his jazz compositions with the two Jelly Roll Blues. It was around 1920 that New Orleans style jazz was at its peak. So musicians started to travel. It was taken over by swing in, after, in 1920. But, you know, just like fashion, everything comes back. And we can see New Orleans jazz make its way back in the 1940s to the 1950s, and then even today, which is pretty cool. Um, but we aren't there yet. I do want to talk a little about 1920 to 1933, but let me set the scene. You have mood lighting. You have a dark underground space. You have giggle water, which in the past is actually referred to alcohol during the prohibition. Because why would you announce to the world you're drinking when it's illegal? No, I'm just drinking giggle water. <laughs> and then you have flapper dresses and dancing and just lots of fun and excitement. You just found out that Al Capone escaped the, escaped the police. King Oliver's Creole band is playing. Guess what? You just walked into a speakeasy. <laughs> Welcome. This big band setup is just how they would have it at the speakeasy, depending on the size. So if they only had room for four musicians, it would be half of this. But this is the setup for a 19-piece band. And while they were playing, people were dancing, they were drinking, they were having fun, making business deals, and they had code words, like giggle water, if you see on the door on the way out, there's a sign that says Larry sent me. That was one of the code words to get into Al Capone speaking back in the day. Larry sent me. Just tell him Larry sent you. <laughs> now, King Oliver's Creole Band act, uh, actually traveled a lot and featured Louis Armstrong and his band. Oliver came 
thing Oliver really wanted Lewis. And Lewis was hesitant, but his wife convinced him it would be a great idea. And they traveled to Chicago to play their New Orleans Jazz. And this is when it gets out of New Orleans and into Chicago Jazz. When Chicago musicians heard Lewis play, they really wanted to do that, but they added their own twist to it. And that's how you get evolving jazz. Lewis is definitely a trendsetter. He also popularized scat singing. Does anybody know what scat singing is? Yes. It's when you use non nonsense words to sing the beats. And that's kind of what Cat Calloway did with his chorus. Actually, it is. It's a um, Thank <laughs> you. 
There is, I have a display out in the hall uh, full of library books that we offer. If you have an interest in one of them, feel free to put it on hold at the library. And once my uh, workshops are through, the book will be sent straight to you. There is one out there of New Orleans travel. I definitely suggest taking a look at that. And I, it's impractical to think we can just go to New Orleans tomorrow, as much as we want to. But we can look at the book and visually put our minds in New Orleans. I also have some buttons and stickers out there for you to take. I make all of those in the Maker Lab with Sir Leon here. Thank you for coming. He runs the Maker Lab at the library, and we have a button maker. Uh, we can print out stickers. There's also Cricut machines, uh, silhouette machines. There's sewing machines. If, if you want to learn something, the Maker Lab is the place to go hands on. Also computer classes, if anybody's interested. <laughs> Uh, in front of the books out there, there is more events listed. If you, if you really like this one and you want to see what else Rockford Public Library has, take a look at that. I do have some door prizes today. I want to get that out of the way just in case you, don't, you can't stay for the music or to jam out. Um, I will be right back. <laughs> we, um, right next to the giggle water out there, that's also free to take. It's all yours. Hydration is key. Right next to it, on the right side, there's um, books that are combined with a few movies in there. Feel free to take one of those. Take a cup. Uh, don't fight all at once for the cup. There's three of them. <laughs> and then there's like these little blue books. Yes, exactly. Those I, I made myself. That's just something to keep in your hands. If, if some, something comes to mind musically and you really want to write it down lyrically, um, that's all yours to take. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today and spending your time with me, learning a little bit about jazz. We are going to take a 10 minute break for bathrooms, for waters, to go get your prizes. Um, and then if you brought an instrument today, go ahead and warm up. <laughs> 